during this holiday season. Many of us have watched the Hallmark Channel and watched the same old Hallmark Christmas movies with nearly the exact same plot. Some workaholic person who, who's always a little bit meaner and crueler than they need to be. They never have time to date or be in a relationship, but somehow they go back to their hometown or the hometown of their relative or something. Uh, and through the magic of the Christmas spirit, their hearts change uh, and they find the, the perfect uh, romantic partner uh, and they begin to date them and foster a relationship and then we assume that they get married and live happily ever after. I know that's, that's a little bit of a, a short summary, even shorter than the Cliff Notes versions, but uh, at least that's my impression of them. In this week's passage from the Gospel of Matthew, we see other barriers to marriage that are resolved by obedience to God. In this week's passage, we see two people who are called to be obedient, Joseph and Mary. And primarily the focus of this obedience is one that we often overlook, and that is Joseph. Joseph is described what little description we have as being a righteous man. Now, the word for righteous means obedience. Throughout the New and Old Testament, those who are obedient to God's will and God's law are said to be righteous. Joseph is one of these people. It is through his righteousness, through obedience, that things will be worked out. What's interesting is his fiancée, the woman that will soon be his wife, Mary. Mary's name comes from the name Miriam. The name Miriam means rebellion, not exactly the name that you would choose for someone else who has already demonstrated her obedience by bearing the Son of God. But she, like Joseph, is a near-perfect example of obedience. And these two obedient parents would be tasked with raising the Son of God who is obedient even to the point of death. And so it is important for there to be obedience. We struggle very often with obedience out of fear. The angels anticipate both the fear of Mary and Joseph as the angels do with everyone they encounter throughout the Bible. One of the first words the angels always speaks to anyone they encounter is, do not be afraid. And yet Mary and Joseph had good cause to fear, given the unexpected appearance and the strange appearance of angels as we see in the biblical accounts. And so as they are fearful of this creature that comes to them unexpectedly with a different appearance, they soon get over their fears and are obedient. We struggle very often with obedience because of fear. We as a culture and society are dominated by fear. We have been able to make ourselves who we are by acting out of things with a healthy fear and then some of us have acted maybe a little bit more irrationally with that fear, and it causes us to struggle with obedience. Particularly in the last 20 years, since the events of September 11th, 2001, and even more recently with this pandemic, many of us are dominated by fear. The narrative that we hear is fear, and the way to overcome it is security. We are always seeking for some sort of security, something to keep us from that fear. And so because we want some semblance or, or idea of security and, and avoiding fear, we wind up living timid lives. So instead of being courageous, we're content to be safe, at least what we think is safe in our own minds. And we fear excessively when we allow the avoidance of evil to trump the pursuit of good. And yet, through the fears that they may have, 
Joseph and Mary overcome them. For us and for them it is true. Our overwhelming fears need themselves to be overwhelmed by bigger and better things. Joseph and Mary's fears certainly were in the good news of the coming Savior. In spite of what they may have had to legitimately fear, through their obedience, they overcame their fears and proved the good news for all of us. As they are obedient, we can often interpret their obedience as a sense of mandatory volunteerism. What those who are familiar with serving in the military might call being voluntold. You'll notice as you read throughout the Bible that angels and God often ask people to do things for him or them. The angels in this week's passage ask Mary and Joseph if they'll do the plans that God has intended. It's not necessarily that they're asking them, are you going to do it? It's more, it'd be a really good idea if you would do this. Otherwise, there may be unintended consequences. So, very strongly consider, please, doing this. Now, while it may be true that God could find somebody else, he could move on from Joseph and Mary, and instead, uh, maybe it's, it's Esther and, uh, and, and Simon. Uh, he could move on to, to some other couple. But he chooses and asks Joseph and Mary, who know that there is something important by being obedient to the Lord. God deals with us in a similar manner. There are a lot of events in our lives that God wants us to learn some positive character trait. And he tells us, I've decided for whatever to happen, and I'd like you to be obedient about it. And if you are, it will affect your life for the better. God isn't always looking for the best and brightest, the most handsome or beautiful, the most polished or popular. God is more concerned with looking for men and women who will be responsive to his will and to his plans, people who are willing to hear and obey, just as Joseph and Mary. Through Joseph's obedience, we see that it is displayed in a great act of mercy. Joseph's obedience and righteousness are defined by his merciful act towards Mary. Deep inside, many of us crave mercy, love, and acceptance. We want to be loved despite our so-called craziness, to be handled in a tender manner. And so if this is true, that we want those aspects of mercy and love, that we want to be handled tenderly, that we want to receive mercy and that love, then it is also true that we must be tender, merciful, and forgiving to others. Joseph, knowing this, probably because of another biblical hero whose name he bears, acts in mercy. Recall the story of the Old Testament hero, Joseph, son of Jacob. The Old Testament Joseph was eminently wise, and he forgave his dastardly brothers who sold him into slavery and broke their father's heart. At an opportunity that Old Testament Joseph was given to be merciful, tender, and forgiving to his brothers, he chose that rather than trying to get even or get vengeance upon them. It is also interesting that both the Old Testament and New Testament Joseph are defined by dreams. We see in the Old Testament that as the Old Testament Joseph tells his brothers, even though you intended to do me harm, God intended it for good. The Old Testament Joseph 
knew the divine plan was more important than any sort of treachery that his brothers had planned for him. The New Testament Joseph, also through a dream, realizes what he may have thought was harmful to his and his soon-to-be wife's reputation was intended for the good of all humanity by God. We have that promise and we rest in it, that what could have changed Joseph and Mary's relationship does not because of their obedience and righteousness, and it is intended by God for all of humanity to be good news. The bottom line that we should look at in the story of Christmas, the one requirement this Advent season and Christmas to become truly real and meaningful for us is our willingness to receive Christ and to live life as Christ's servant in obedience. In this way, Christmas will last the whole year through.